This is 7 National News and in our top story. On the occasion of the 33rd anniversary of the Gulf Cooperation Council, the Federal National Council has paid tribute to the leaders of the GCC nations. They greeted the UA President, His Highness Sheikh Khalifa bin Zayed Al Nahyan and the other leaders, expressing best wishes for further progress, prosperity and integration for people of the region within the framework of a united vision and a common destiny. In the statement, the FNC praised the leaders who launched the Pan-Gulf entity in Abu Dhabi on the 25th of May 1981, based on their far-sighted vision, sincere determination and faith in the vital role it plays in the service of their country's future, realising their people's long-standing dreams. In particular, the FNC paid tribute to the UAE's founding father, His Highness Sheikh Zayed bin Sultan Al Nahyan, who was the first to promote the establishment of the GCC, following his own success in unifying his country's emirates into a solid federation. The statement added that the UAE has always been at the forefront of supporters of the GCC, encouraging continuous development of the entity and its action to increase its effectiveness. The FNC statement also emphasised that the GCC has served all of its members, as well as other Arab and Muslim countries. The Philippine Embassy in Abu Dhabi is moving to a new location in order to accommodate the growing number of Filipino population in the Emirate and also to provide more efficient services. From Sunday the 1st of June, the Philippine Embassy over in Abu Dhabi will open to the public at its new location. From 8am, it will start offering its services in a twin villa located opposite Mushrif Mall, which is also more accessible by public transport. One villa will have the Department of Foreign Affairs related services, while the other villa will be allocated for the attached agencies, such as the Philippine Overseas Labour Office, the Social Security System and the Home Development Mutual Fund. The increased space is expected to boost efficiency in serving the estimated 200,000 Filipinos who live and work in the capital. Timings in the new offices will remain from 8am to 12pm and 1pm to 5pm from Sunday to Thursday. Contact information for the embassy's new location will also be made available soon. Residents and shoppers in Dubai took part in a new health initiative today that aims to address heart-related illnesses and also looks to break three Guinness World Records this year. The first record attempt was for the most tests for gl blood glucose levels. More than 80 nurses were on site for an eight-hour diabetes screening for mall goers. His Excellency Engineer S. Al Maidor, the Director General of the Dubai Health Authority, led the event, along with other senior DHA officials. Organised by Benchmark Middle East, the One Heart Health Community Awareness Drive aims to highlight the risks of heart problems and underline the importance of a healthy lifestyle. They say two more attempts for the most blood pressure readings and most cholesterol readings will take place in August and November. All of these have the same single aim, which is to tackle cardiovascular disease, the world's biggest killer, accounting for a quarter of all deaths here in the UAE. When it comes to uh, heart disease, uh, you, you have the, the modifiable risk factors and the main three modifiable risk factors, diabetes, cholesterol and hypertension. So the first attempt is that we will try to um, break the, the Guinness World Record for the most glucose uh, level tests in eight hours. And this really helps people uh, in getting more attention about their blood uh, sugar and we will discover people that they don't know that they are uh, with high blood sugar. This event will give us an idea of uh, the nature of the or the amount of the peop, uh, people who have diabetes out there. Our next step is uh, that we already are working on a strategy across Dubai Health Authority to tackle diabetes and one of the things that we are looking at is to setting uh, is setting up a diabetes registry where we will keep records of all these people, follow them and make sure that they are taken care of properly.
as a pharmaceutical company, we try to partner with the Ministry of Health to make sure that we achieve their objectives, and that is one of their core objectives, combating diabetes. So this initiative is about raising the awareness of diabetes. As you know, it's a silent disease for a long number of years until it gets diagnosed. So the earlier it gets uh, diagnosed, the better for the treatment uh, prognosis. The current world record is held by the Turkish Diabetes Foundation, who screened 7,024 people over an eight-hour period in 2012. While it would be a great achievement to break the Guinness World Records title in here in Dubai, organisers and health officials say their primary focus is to spread the word that heart diseases are preventable by making positive changes that lead to a healthy and active lifestyle. Uh, we have a history of uh, diabetics in our family, but uh, yeah, okay, of course, we are regularly checking it, maintaining it. But uh, this is like a part of a world uh, which we want to, to participate, basically. So we want to contribute for the something from our side also. Just passing through today and I spotted the diabetes stand. I thought it's such a, a great idea and a brilliant initiative. Uh, given it's a world record attempt as well, you, you have to make an effort. And I think for what you can learn here in just one minute will probably change your life. So. It struck me as a completely win situation. It's good to just have something that we can turn up to so you don't have to go to the doctor, take the children out of school, um, especially when we got concerns for the little for the little one. She's just showing her a few signs. Um, she drinks a lot of water. She's tired. She eats a lot. So um, her, her school nurse has suggested she get tested. So we saw this and we thought we'd come along. The Road and Transport Authority will introduce 118 biodiesel green buses around Dubai by the end of the year. According to a report, the biodiesel buses, powered by a mixture of cooking oil and diesel, emit 33% less CO2 compared to fuel of conventional buses. Yusuf Al Ali, the CEO of the RTA's Public Transport Agency, was quoted as saying that they are currently in the process of converting 118 buses of their fleet, all manufactured by Mercedes, which will be powered by biodiesel, and all of their internal lighting will also be powered by solar energy. They are also using retreaded tyres on all of the buses, and the material used for seats and flooring inside the bus will be eco-friendly. The buses will also have LED lighting solutions. This comes as the RTA first launched the Green Bus Pilot Project back in 2012, and this is one of their phases of the rollout initiative. The RTA is looking to have an entire fleet of green buses before the Expo 2020. In its fifth edition, the non-profit international Children's Day Public Welfare Programme continues to promote camaraderie, peace, cultural exchange and children's rights. The Dubai Women's Association, along with the Chinese Consulate in Dubai and the Chinese Women's Association, organised the International Children's Day Public Welfare Programme on Saturday in a lead-up to the celebration of the International Children's Day on June the 1st, which is observed globally to highlight children's issues. His Excellency Tang Weibin, the Consul General of the People's Republic of China to Dubai, graced the event and highlighted the importance of diversity and friendship. Residents and visitors at the Dubai Mall had an opportunity to enjoy the performances of 160 children from 30 different nationalities. Among the highlights of the event included song and dance performances by children across different cultures and nations. Chinese classical music, an authentic kung fu performance, a magic show, as well as 15 artworks made by children were also showcased. With a growing Chinese community here in the UAE, programme organisers hope to contribute in the efforts of bridging cultural gaps, as well as ensure a future of unity and understanding. Well, this uh, uh, event is so important because uh, all the children demonstrate the world future. So uh, that means we are we're working for the uh, future world. So that's uh, very important for all of us. 
And finally, with the FIFA World Cup just weeks away, Adidas, together with their brand ambassador players, Michel Salgado and Graffite, launched their campaign, All In or Nothing, in a lead up to the major sporting event. At a press conference, Adidas launched their campaign as the official partner of the FIFA World Cup to be played in Brazil. The South American country will certainly have the world's attention for the month, as the best players from around the world compete to be crowned world champions. It's an event that many fans are looking forward to, and even some of our local stars, such as the Arabian Golf League's best international player, Graffite, are also feeling intensity and excitement for the tournament. However, it is a completely different experience for those on the pitch. Salgado, who played for the Spanish national team in the 2006 World Cup, stated that wearing the country's jersey is a proud moment for any player. Both the players stated that Brazil on home turf will be the favourites. However, defending champion Spain will be the side to beat. It's something different, you know, it's really intense, you know, you got your, your people going to any country and supporting you. Uh, you know that in, my, in our case in Spain, we go 50 million people and uh, they are following us, they are supporting us and they are suffering with us. The biggest competition in the world uh, when it comes down, you know, to the nations. So um, when you represent your, your country, you know, in, in such a big competition is big responsibility. That's the first thing, you know, you feel. And uh, when you approach, you know, to the to the to a competition like that, to the to World Cup, uh, you know, uh, you know, you want to to get really ready, to get prepared, you know, for that for that month uh, where everybody's going to talk about this competition. So um, I think for me, it's really amazing memories. You have a very good team. You have a very good coach. The moment of the team is very good. Uh, they also the fact that you play in Brazil, you know, side your support, your fans. This will be amazing, special. If Brazil be in the final, playing the Maracanã, the the temple of the football. But you have a chance, like uh, Germany also will be very strong. Argentina also will, will be playing South South America, and the, after you have Spain, was win won the, the last World Cup. It will be a good and strong World Cup. But uh, I believe and uh, I hope Brazil will be in the final.